to. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Roll Hit Die presents our new Sunday night game of Vampire the Masquerade. Where uh, I, Dan Latham, also known as Shadow Degar, run these gentlemen, well, through their new on life. Well, at least for some of them. And uh, we'll see what kind of chaos uh, comes from that, shall we? Before I get into to, uh, our game, I, I will uh, allow our players to introduce themselves and their characters, which we've not done yet, I don't believe, other than, of course, the first episode when they first appeared. But Roll20 is what you're seeing in the middle of your screen right now that allows me to create maps, lay them out, and have some immersion for my players and for my viewers to be able to see, well, to see a bird's eye view in some cases of the city of Savannah. So everything I'm using pretty much as far as our battle maps, I guess you could say, or our location maps, are brought through, um, brought from a bird's eye view of the actual city of Savannah. So it's all real time, real, real place. Nothing made up, except for maybe a few locations. You know, like if they decide to go to the FBI building for chance, I don't have the layout of the FBI building because I don't want to get put on a watch list. <laughs> But seeing as I've worked already. up the FBI building three times now on my computer, I might already be on one, but that, I digress. Uh, also, our miniatures are created through the Hero Forge uh, app. You can create a custom mini all the way from you know your basic tabletop mini size, as I'm showing you below the camera, so we bring that up. And all the way up to like your statuette size, you know, about six inches or more. You can sit on your table, your bookshelves of your custom character. If you just want to. Now, if you want to and you play strictly digital games, you can create those with a subscription packet and have a digital uh, miniature for your digital games. Gooey Cube is another sponsor of ours. Let me rephrase that. Gooey Cube is the only one that's agreed to actually kind of sponsor us. Uh, we don't have any sponsors. I'd just like to give shout outs to good companies. And Gooey Cube is one of them. They're a fifth edition DD world created by a company and expanded on by the community. So if you've not had a chance to go to check them out, Go to gooeycube.com and see what they have. Uh, as far as that's concerned, I can't see of any other announcements I need to make at this particular point in time. So before we jump into tonight's episode, why don't my players tell me who you are, who you're playing, and whatever other tidbits you want to give. We'll start from right below me with uh, Dominico. Hello, my name is Curtis Ross. Tonight I am playing Dominico. He is a large fellow with a accent I cannot do, so just pretend that everything I say is... Forget about it. Yeah, kind of from New York-esque. So, uh, he is a bruja, and yeah, all types of fun stuff. He tries not to say too much and stay out of the limelight, but we've seen how good that's gone so far, so... Well, I mean, in all honesty... You're not the one full in the limelight, but okay. Speaking of, yeah. uh, I guess he's talking to you, Robert. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> limelight would be you. <laughs> Hello, I'm choking, and I'm playing. On a moment, though. Okay. Hello, I'm Marcus Scott. Tonight I will be playing somebody who tends to change his name on a regular basis. I started out as Devin, then Janos. Tonight I'm going to try out Angel until I screw up that identity and then, you know. Uh, so what is the reason for the uh, different names each session? I expose my identity to people that shouldn't have my identity and hey i don't know how to be a vampire or a spy or anything like that right right all right and the one who's trying to keep them alive hi i'm robert maxwell and i play well it depends on what day it is he'll either call himself judd or jude um he is appears to be a nosferatu uh who is a a fringe member of the Camarilla, but was hired to keep these two and a few other people alive. He, well, he kind of kept these two alive, but more in an undead state. And the one other person he was able to rescue is now in the hands of the FBI. <laughs> and 
we're going to go from there. See if he can I keep mean, them alive a little bit longer. You were hired to keep us alive. Yes. We are dead now, and you still got paid. Yes, because, you know... That's I think this rough. Was, Only two-thirds. Yeah, I think this was the only end goal dead. anyway. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, you're only mostly dead. Yeah. You're not completely dead. You're just mostly dead. Well, let me take a look outside. <laughs> so, do you all remember where we left off last week? Or what happened last week? I do. Well... For those that have not watched, I will go ahead and give a little bit of a recap. Last session, we started with our newly undead, with their chaperone, making their way back to 51 degrees. Now, they decided to take a back alley due to the fact that they could see an unmarked FBI car with a couple of gentlemen inside watching the front door. I'm guessing they didn't see anybody in the back. So they decided to take that route. Now, mind you, Devin, at this point in time, was under what name was that? Um, this is this was uh, a this was Yanos. personality number two. Yeah. And uh, you know, flamboyantly walking down the back alley like he's talking on the phone with somebody, um, openly with no issue whatsoever. Yeah. While uh, Judd decided to do his typical, you can't see me. John Cena trick, and um, Dominico decided to try to do the old-fashioned stealth. Well, none of them noticed that there was another agent. <coughs> you all right? Yeah. Okay. None of them noticed there was another agent in the alleyway. Matter of fact, he was just kind of standing back behind a dumpster that they walked past. And as they walked past, he walked up to Dominico and just started asking questions. You know, who are you? Why are you coming this direction? Do you know this person? Were you, you know, at this club? Different things that he really didn't have answers for because he was definitely not going to give any answers. They went through that encounter pretty decently, you know, a little con convincing and conniving. And, of course, um, there was a little bit of a drawback because somebody decided to question whether or not the gentleman was an FBI agent, which is fine. Until you get his card, call his number with your newly used cell phone that, that you're trying to stay secret with, and end up giving the FBI your phone number, which gave them pretty much access to your phone. But, you know, like I said, he's not a spy or a vampire. He's kind of new to all this. So how was he to know or even think about the fact that the FBI could tap his phone, even if it was turned off? Whether they did or whether they didn't, that's beside the point. They convinced the guy he left. They went inside. When they let it be known to Kristoff that they had indeed called this agent with their own cell phone, Strix grabbed his cell phone, snapped it in half, and dropped it into the uh, fish tank that was nearby. To, uh, well, Devin's detriment, he was a little upset about the fact that his brand new phone got snapped and thrown away. But for a good cause. Uh, after some communication, some conversations, they decided to take the two new guys out and introduce them to what they're going to have to re re rely on for the remainder of their undead life. How to hunt without getting caught. Now, Dominique, I think, was the first one we went out and did. Um, he did a good job. He tracked down what we call evildoers. Somebody stalking somebody. Got him in a back alley. But almost lost complete control. Actually, I think he did lose complete control of his feeding process and was snatched off of his uh, victim or his meal by Kristoff. And, you know, Kristoff cleaned up the rest of the, the situation. Told him he might need to try to control himself just a little bit more because, you know, dead bodies tend to leave questions. And we move to De Devin. Devin is... Well, Devin decided to hunt, as Devin does. Uh, he went to another club, found somebody sitting at a bar that apparently was on a little something, you know, because Devin is into that kind of stuff. Convinces her to go back to his place. Well, actually, to her place, I believe. No, you went to your place. Yeah. 
Strix hooked me up with him. Yeah, Strix twice. ended up leaving sooner uh, rather than later and made sure his place was arranged for him, so he was able to take her to his place. And after a evening of whining and dining, I suppose is the best way to put it, um, Nevin has started his herd. His uh, booty call numbers for whenever he gets hungry. Now, I believe Judd, on the other hand, was walking around with Victor. Uh, Victor being the Nosferatu security uh, advisor for Kristoff. Oh, it's least, Victor. I had it as Vincent. Sorry. You probably did, and I probably said the wrong name. Give me a second to verify with my notes. Uh, Vincent. Yeah, yep. it's Vincent. Okay. Nosferatu, raspy voice, works for Kristoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, I don't know where Vincent... No, it is Vincent. I said Victor, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Vincent, sorry. Vincent um, and him walked around while Vincent stayed... While Vincent pulled a Judd, Judd decided to speak with a mother... Where's her name? Oh, hold on. Mother Mary yeah. Margaret, I think is what you said? Sister Mary Margaret. Sister Mary Margaret, not Mother Mary Margaret. She's not high enough in the... Uh, nunnery for the mother of sister plot, but whatever yeah and uh, ask questions about a possibility of some new faces showing up in the um what is it uh, area the shelter the community community and at this point in time none but he did find out through his contacts and his investigations throughout the evening that um one amber owens is in fact in fbi custody Somebody witnessed her get picked up before she ever checked into the hospital, get put into the back of a black sedan, and carried away. Uh, last possible known location would be in FBI custody at more than likely the FBI field office here in Savannah. You finished off your nights, went back to your place, that if you weren't already there, which Devin was, and called it a day, I suppose, as opposed to calling it a night. So we start our session this evening with you uh, you three trying to rouse yourself from your eternal sleep to start the fifth night. Okay, well it looks like our new ones have just definitely succeeded. Oh. So I'm trying to get everything and see everything again. You're, you're trying to wake up, but you know, that that great, 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 great whatever he is to you, just yeah. won't leave you alone. He's just, just berates you about the fact that you have these weird friends and you're living in a uh, in a mausoleum around your dead ancestors. You've, you've made nothing with your life. He's so disappointed that one of his ancestors turned out like this. You know, typical grouchy ghost conversations. Yeah. Uh... Thanks, thanks, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep calling you granddad. It's so much easier. So, you know, thanks. Um, really means a lot to have your confidence and my abilities. Uh, you know, you should take it as an honor that I find living here a great place, you know, because you did build a great tomb for yourself. It's a tomb. It's not yeah. a house. It's not a lifestyle. Well, it is for me. I mean, better than some of the places I've lived. Uh, where did I go wrong? Or where did my my children go wrong? Oh, I could tell you a lot of where they went wrong. <laughs> so, um, you wake up a tad bit hungry. Mm -hmm. And I still have two blood bags, so I am going to finish off one of those. And cancel out that hunger and go on. All right, so the other two gentlemen wake up. I'm assuming you kicked your uh, oh yeah your dinner out the door before the sun uh, before it was even close for the sun coming up. Correct. That's correct. So, you gentlemen wake up. What are you doing? <sighs> I love the yawn and the stretch when knowing none of it's necessary. Uh, I am currently looking in the mirror at the 
you know, what would have been a bruise if I would, you know, still bleed. And I'm contemplating trying to figure out how the hell I heal that. <laughs> That's why I've been doing this entire time. Um, mending superficial health damage, I think. Yeah, because you actually got kind of... I got clocked a little bit and took two points of damage. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, making sure I'm all dressed right and whatnot. Looking pretty. Uh, Getting ready to leave and wondering where the hell am I supposed to meet these two if I'm... Cemetery? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to get dressed. Look at uh, the note that Spritz gave me that uh, said, hey, your account is at this bank. Mm -hmm. Go down to that bank, withdraw some money. Right, as you walk out, the same doorman is sitting there. He opens the door for you and says, have yourself a good evening. You Do you have any odd senses whatsoever? Do I have any what? Give me an insight. Insight? Yeah. All right. You have heightened senses, don't you? Yes, I do. I do. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, let's see. Supernatural given ability, seeing pitch darkness, hear ultrasonic frequencies, and smell the fear and cowering prey. Uh, but. You smell no fear. Uh, You want a wits and awareness roll, right? No, insight. Or, oh, insight. Yeah, Sorry. Insight and, um, that, I don't know. Uh, we'll say wits, insight. Okay. Insight, and you said what? Go with wits. I'm having a hard time hearing. Go with wits. Wits. Okay. Yeah, I guess, and you're not really catching it. Yeah, I'm blissfully unaware. Yeah, all right. So we'll uh, back burner that till later. Yeah. So you make your way uh, to the bank. Withdraw a couple hundred dollars. Well, it's an ATM. Well, I need to go into the bank to withdraw. I don't have a card. Or did she give me a card? She gave you an account number. And a bank. Yeah. But, you know, bank's closed. Well, son of a bitch. I mean, it is after six. Yeah. Um. Come on, hills, bills, cotton trails. Go back to my apartment. <laughs> yeah. Uh. How's it set up? Anything nice and shiny or. In your apartment? Yeah. Just spare Spartan, I guess is what they call it. You right. got a bed, you know, couch, TV, end tables. Just the main things that you need to, like, you know, live in an apartment. There's no dishes. Ugh. There's no food in the fridge. There's no hotel rooms on the walls, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a hotel room probably have the same amount of stuff in it as this does. Okay. Well, hell's bells. Um, if you want to move on to them, I gotta think of what I'm gonna okay. do now. Um, Judd, you wake up. Granted, you have your issue with your ancestor there. Um, I you know I've been hosting some neonates for the last couple of nights, so I'm cleaning up. You know, putting away sleeping bags and other things. All right. Um, have you guys uh, have no way to communicate with each other? I'm the only one with the phone. Yeah, because somebody lost theirs. Yeah, yes. it's like, okay, you get a phone, I get a phone, I got mine, put it away. And then... One of us doesn't it. have a phone. All right, so you're going to make your way towards the uh, cemetery, you said? Uh, yeah, I was going to grab some cash and catch the ferry before it gets too late across to the city. And then, yeah, probably 
if there's a taxi or anything, get a taxi down towards the area. Just probably a random address in the area, and then walk my way towards the. Uh, All right, it's easy enough. Cemetery. And then during the way, I would uh, go ahead and attempt to heal some of these superficial wounds, which it looks like it's just a rouse check. And since I'm blood potency one, I can heal one superficial per check per turn. There you go. Hey, and that's going well. So uh, as I'm walking, I might try once more to top myself off. Okay. Hey, I'm doing dandy. Hey. So yeah, no, I'm dressed up like normal. I'm in a halfway nice suit with a little bit of jewelry on, but not trying to stick out, but that's just how I look. And then just for old time's sake, pull out a cigar, put it in my mouth, and uh, just hang out. And since I remember him saying fire's bad, I do not light a lighter because apparently fire's bad, and I don't need one near my face. <laughs> But, you know, for old time's sake, to try and feel like I used to walking around a cigar towards the cemetery. All right. So, um, just walking towards the cemetery? Yep. Just taking my time, not trying to look suspicious, as suspicious as I can look walking towards the cemetery at, what is it, 9, 10 o'clock at night? Yeah, you're not too concerned with that, because, you know, just a few nights ago, there was, like, an entire party going on inside the cemetery. True, true, yeah. So you're and pretty I'm not, certain there's not like a night watchman that spends a whole lot of time watching the cemetery. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I make my way there. All right, doesn't take too long. You, uh, we'll say, um, I'm not going to have you roll anything to remember where it's at. You have no problem finding it. Okay. So you're, you come up to the mausoleum, you spent the night in or at least two nights uh, in yep wrap on the uh thing yep okay um police open up recognizing the voice i will open the crypt from the inside <laughs> how's it going uh good good just cleaning up a little bit uh how are you tonight Oh, doing fine, doing fine. Uh, got in a little bit of a scrap, but everything's fine last night. All's good. Oh, so, so you didn't get to eat? Yeah, yeah, it went great. Totally great, yeah. Nothing happened. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have uh, plans with Chris off tonight? Uh, no, he taught me a bunch of stuff and just gave me a whole bunch of pointers last night, so I figured I'd come see what you're up to. Do you know what happened to Judd? Or not Judd. Uh, what's his name now? Um, Master Beats. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> I was not uh, expecting not sure. that. <laughs> you know, that's a great name. <laughs> Oh, so, uh, yeah, I have no way to get a hold of him, so I guess, uh, you got any plans for tonight? I'm sure somebody, I'm sure somebody at the club might know how to get in touch with him. Uh, well, I found out where Amber is. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, that was something She's in FBI kinda... custody. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, that's no. even worse than just cops. Um, yeah. How would we break her out of the FBI? Um, As you know, I am not the sneakiest, or most convincing, or inconspicuous. The, well, yeah, I mean, goes without saying. Um, yeah, um, the truth is, I have no idea how to get into that place. Never been in myself, so no idea what we'd be looking at trying to get in. Um and I can usually find my way around any lock, but beyond that, you know. Do you know how to deal with key cards? Those type well, of locks? I mean, I know how to break them off and get the uh, wiring to actually work out, but that does typically set off some alarms. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was curious. I know, like, you know, picking locks, that's, you know, one thing, but 
key cards is different. And I'm sure yeah. they don't just have a, you know, a big old padlock that says, here they are. Yeah. Maybe we could talk to exactly. uh, Trix about yeah. that. She might have an idea yep. be, be able to give us a map of the place. She seemed savvy with mm. technology. Yes. Yeah, it's one of the things I just never really gotten around to. Yeah. I mean, it's, I know a tiny bit. I know how to run some stuff, you know, simple. I never got into it myself either. Yeah. You know, uh, but anyway, you're going to need. That's what you guys exactly. have to do now. Yeah. I mean, uh, anyway, why don't we go over to the club? You're breaking up a little. Yeah, I was going to. Probably the best thing with. Oh, sorry. Over, it's not now getting my internet is unstable. Head yeah. over to the club. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's fine with me. Um, you good to go for the night? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Just you, walk gonna, up and I'll be good. You going to take a, one of those for the road? You going to have a roadie with you? Uh, yeah, I always have one. I'll oh, have okay. to get some more soon, but you know, yeah. no problem for right now. Yeah, probably not. The, do you know any other places that have those? Probably not the best oh, to keep hitting the same one. Oh, no, no, no. They're all over town. Okay, okay. Good, and I good. have some people I can go to if I really need it. So, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I don't know how all that works out, and you know, still the whole thing is new, trying to get used to it all. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I do. Do you need to go any hunting before we get over to the club, or are you okay for tonight? I think I'm all right for right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm good for now. Maybe later. I don't know. Depends on what happens, you know. I feel like sometimes, you know, something happens and you got to get that urge. But yeah. for now, I'm fine. Good. So. Uh, well, yeah, so let's go on and head on over to the pub. And so that's what we'll do. Heading on up. All right. Um, Judd, as far as your bag situation is concerned, you know that there's those blood bag mobiles all over the place. Yeah. But you know there's also at least two other locations in the city that are a little more... Protected. Well, they're protected, but they're also... Uh, the way they acquire the blood is a little different. Oh. Okay. But it's... In what way? Uh, well, it's... Um, what do they call them? Let's just say they have their own herd. In a way. Gotcha. And they've got them hooked up to like, uh, almost like, uh, what is it called? Um, not Daedalus machines. Uh, what are they? The machines that, um, uh, dialysis? Dialysis machines. Almost okay. like dialysis machines that just kind of pulls it out of them, puts it in a bag. Gotcha. So there, there are some feeding holes. Yes. There's a few spots other than those uh, wagons to get it from. Gotcha. So, you two make your way towards 51, um, taxi? Yeah, Uber. it would be a taxi. So we're quite a ways away, so. Yeah. Alright. Yep, I can get, I can cover it. It's fine, it's not too much. And, yeah, I just don't want to be seen while I'm out, because I just, you know, I don't look really human. So, rouse check, I'm fine, yeah. and I will be with him invisible for it. All right, so just remember, you'll have to hold the door open for him. Yep, yep. Right, that way gonna... there are fewer questions. Yeah, I'm going to have to get some headphones or something, so if I'm talking to myself, people think maybe I'm just one of those assholes who talks on their phone with their earphones in in public, out loud. Where are you at? Gotcha. You all right? <laughs> I was looking around because he went invisible. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm talking to myself again, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, rides uneventful. You make your way to 51. Um, you can see the typical line out front. 
Uh, ah. The bouncer from the other day that you talked to there. What was his name? Jordan. Day shift bouncer Jordan, yeah. Yep. Probably. God, face this. Should we try and go in the back or go in the front? Going in the front would be waiting. Back. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hang back. You want to see if there's any, if that guy's hanging out in the alley again? Yeah, I'll go do that first. Let me scout. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back around. All right. I'm going to head over to the uh, Better Than Sex dessert place. It's just down the alley. It's down the block. It's over there. You'll find me. Okay. Okay. So I'll go around and make sure there's no waiting FBI agents. So you give me a wits awareness. Oh, I had a feeling you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, wow, three out of two. Yep, so. you see, you see a fellow back there. Does he look like FBI? He's kind of young looking. He is wearing a dark suit and he's smoking a cigarette. Okay. Um, let's see. So I will go back over to um, Better Than Sex Dessert and uh, lean over and say, well, there is somebody at back uh, smoking. Could be FBI. Looks a little young. Well, shit. I mean, we could just try and go past him and just go in the back door, but I don't know. Again, you know, like, it was just a, yeah, actually, I'm going to open up my phone real quick and scroll through the contacts and uh, see if I have any contacts I didn't previously or if it's just mm -hmm. empty still. Or if I would have got a phone number from Kristoff while we were out and about. Uh, let's see. The number that you have, because it's still your own phone. You, you didn't leave yours in a bag behind, or leave anything behind. Uh, I did crush my old one and get a new one. Okay, so the only contacts you probably have in it right now are Kristoff's, or at least the club's. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can try and... Uh, get a hold of him but yeah i don't know maybe if we just i'll call him and see if i can just get a easier route in if there's can be someone waiting yeah because there is another way to do it but yeah and that's probably not the best thing to do with uh oh, oh no no not hitting him. oh all right yeah what were you thinking no. well most people don't like to talk to homeless people and so if i go over and pester him for a while he might just leave for a while that's a thought. If you want to go, yeah, yeah bug him for so change. I, I'm going to go smoke. bug him for a cigarette. Yeah, I was thinking the cigarette. So I will become visible and shuffle over and uh, be a pestering street person who obviously looks diseased or sick. And hey, hey. hey can I get one of those cigarettes from you? Move on, move on, sir. You, you oh no! Please come on, come on. You know, I, I, I go dig in the trash sir. somewhere else. You don't even in this alley. Go he, find yourself another alley. Everything. Oh come on, guy! Come on! I mean, I, I just want a cigarette. Just one. Come on! Come on! Come on! Can't you help a guy out? No, you need to find some place else to be. Why? 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 Why is there like you out here? Are you waiting for somebody? To, he pull, like he a pulls out a man to jump or look, something. FBI business. Just move along. FBI. Why would you care about a place like this? Come on, just just one. I'm really trying to sound drunk too. Uh, yeah. Are you getting right up on him and stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. He he'll he'll he does the typical back away or just kind of like put his hand out like he's trying to keep you away from him kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, FBI business. You need to move on. Don't, don't, don't make me have to lock you up. Okay, I, I'm hoping that I've created enough of a distraction so that Dom can maybe sneak in over to. You the definitely door. have his attention. Okay, so and I, I would attempt to 
get inside. Okay. And then once I see Dom is in, I'm going to go and start shuffling away. And, you know, talking about, you know, and damn, damn feds that are you know, not even helping people. You, know, you sit around, probably trying to molest women. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so go ahead and give me uh, whatever kind of role you want to give to try to sneak yourself in there. Oh, uh, for me? Oh, no, him. for uh, Dominico. That would be probably stealth or sub uh, Stealth, more than likely. Yeah, stealth, since I'm not lying to the guy. Uh, Deck stealth. Okay. Let me find it. Let's see. Give me a subterfuge uh, manipulation roll, um, Judd. Oh, a uh, subterfuge manipulation? Yeah. Okay. I'll probably be spending more power on this. That's what I'm doing. Uh, Since I can reroll three, I'm rerolling the three I failed. So that's two successes. Give me a moment. You gotta figure out what your actual difficulty is. Yep. And I'm doing the exact same thing. Okay, that's enough. Um, and how many successes did you say you had? I had two. One in a willpower and one in a normal success. Okay, that would be enough. The, with the subterfuge, you had his attention enough that he wasn't even looking down that direction. So you'd be hiding from his peripheral view, but you're able to make it in. Okay. Yep. And then, of course, and then... you mose yourself away and... You hear and him then, say something under his breath about, you know, dirty, stinking bums and the nerve to come up to you and, and all that. Exactly. And then once I'm out of his line of sight, I am doing my dust dump and getting out. <laughs> going back into his hole. Yeah, when I get inside, I'm going to hold at that back door for a little bit and see if anybody tries to. Oh, I, I would have told you, don't themselves. worry, because I can actually make it through the front. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'd go up and... Uh, he doesn't have to wait in line if they don't see him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'd probably just uh, yeah, go up and see if I could uh, talk to Kristoff again. Because and... hanging out in there, waiting for somebody who might get distracted by everything. Or I guess not, since they're playing his music that's not as good as it could be. <laughs> well, Maybe. That's if I even make it there. Yeah, there yeah. That possibility. You open the door. All right, so he's someone else now. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, after realizing I don't have a bank card or anything, I'm going to go down to the doorman, introduce myself, say, hey. Good evening, sir. What's your name? Huh? Good, Good evening. evening. I'm Angel. Uh, you are. Sure. Uh, you, you want to know my name, sir? Well, yes. Well, don't too many people ask my name. Well, that's awfully rude of them. Yes, it's awfully rude. The DM has not actually come up with one for that either. But that's just a simple kick, click of the key. So give me just a moment, and I'll tell you what his name is. All right. Oops, that's not the right one. Um, I'll give you his name, but go ahead and what was the question you want to ask him? Uh, I was, do you remember, uh, lady who came in to help set this up for me, my apartment? Oh, yes, you mean, did uh, she, well, anyway. Did she leave a package or anything for me? Uh, no, sir, she did not. She did state that you may need a ride someplace. Uh, first thing this evening when you awoke? Uh, um, yes. Well, I needed to go to the store because I got to pick up some th items, but and I hate to do this. 
I don't have my wallet. It got taken from me. So oh, your wallet? I mean, why on earth did you need your wallet right now, sir? Well, because I gotta go to the store and buy some items. Well, what do you need? I need some hair dye. I need some uh, a new suit to wear. Uh, what kind of suit would you like, sir? Do you uh, would you like an appointment with the uh, tailor that we have here in the uh, establishment, or would you just like us to order some generic suit for you? Wait, what? Would you like to make an appointment with the tailor, or have us just order you a generic suit? We have a tailor here? What? Of course we do, sir. What kind of establishment do you think we let you have here? I thought this was just an apartment building. With a doorman. Well, yeah, a high-end. Precisely, sir. We are a high-end establishment. Is okay. there anything else you, uh, you require? Um, hair dye, suits, what else? Uh, do we have, actually, since we got a tailor here, do we have a salon here? A salon. Um, I'm pretty certain one of the ladies can uh, fit you in. Like I said, I can make an appointment for you. Okay, yes. And uh, I guess if someone can run out and get that... Uh, no, that copper tone spray tan. Um, sir, I don't think you need to spray the spray tan on you. It's not necessary. Oh. I mean, you work the nightlife. There's there's really no need to put on any fake tan. As Miss Strips uh, put it, you uh. You. How to put it? I feel. I understand that you you work priority at night and. And have issues getting out of the day, hence why we have the establishments and the uh, the um, the benefits that we have here at the, the establishment you're living in. Which I forgot okay. what I named it. What did I name it? Uh, let me pull up my. It's a uh, snippet note. Yeah, you'll have to look it up because I have it written. Sticky notes. Uh. Oh, I was playing Edward Dalton just last time. Yeah, you were, because that's what the FBI agent name was. Yes. Uh, shit. I know I wrote it down. Why the hell did I write it? What are you looking for? The name of his uh, apartment. Yeah, I don't okay. think I wrote that down either. Did I actually write it on a piece of paper, or...? It's okay. I'll scroll back up because I know I gave you the address in the chat. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, 203, then... Nope, that's not it. That's <laughs> the location of where Amber's at. It was like 511, wasn't it? Uh, uh, good question. I think it was 5-something. Well, maybe I didn't put it in chat. I think you may have told him off the notes. I probably did. All right. I will get you the name once more here in just a second. Just, uh... So, would you like the appointment set for this evening, sir? Or would you like it set for in the morning or maybe tomorrow night? Uh, if we could get it set uh, sometime next hour or so, if it's available... Uh, I need to start this new job and I want to kind of look fresh, if you know what I mean. Oh, completely understandable. You know, your line of work is definitely uh, a requirement to look fresh. Yes. Do you uh, require anything else? Um, Shall we order dinner for you? No, I'll pick something up on the way. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Do you need me to call you a car? I will need that. Uh, Where are you heading to, sir? That's a good question. Uh, so I was supposed to meet up. You know what? I'll be heading to 51 Club because that's where I'm supposed to start. Excellent, sir. No, well, I'll just I'll meet the guys there later. Well, since you're heading there, uh, 
there's a specific car for you. We'll have them here shortly. Give me a second and I'll call them. Um, is there anything else I can do for you before I call your car? Well... Are you sure you are, don't need me to order you anything to eat? Uh, you know, I, if you want to send a cheeseburger upstairs, some bacon and jalapenos, <laughs> that'd be great. It just kind of looks uh, you and laughs. Sure, a cheeseburger. Uh, I want to, Let me just go ahead and get that car for you, sir. Well, I need to get my hair done and suit before I go. 51 Street. Well, I can't guarantee the appointment will be available. I mean, I still have to get in touch with the people involved. Okay. Do you have clippers I can borrow? I'll go upstairs and do it myself. I mean, if you must, sir. I mean, I'm sure we can find somebody with clippers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you could call the car and tell them to come pick me up for you're, about an hour and a half. You're kind of new to this, aren't you? New to what? Living in an establishment like this, of course. Yes. Um, I had a house, but the ex-wife, you know, she took everything. Yes, I'm sure she did. Freaking... Because I slip and fell that one time. He leans time. in the door, snaps his fingers, and this uh, young lady in a, <clears throat> seems like a cleaning outfit comes walking up. Says something oh. to him in Spanish. He says he responds back to her in Spanish, and she runs off. Hi, I'm Angel. What's your name? Okay. Her okay. name is Gloria. Gloria. Yes. She's one of our uh, nighttime cleaning ladies. And I'm sorry, what was your name again? Gilbert. You can just call me Gil. Gil. Okay. Gil? Nice to meet you. Have you been working here long, or...? I've been here for a few years, yes. Okay. Ever since uh, a rather distinguished gentleman got me the job. Uh... Oh... Uh. Do you know a guy named Kristoff? Do you? Do you? I know several people by different names. I may have heard of a gentleman named Kristoff at one point in time. Oh. Well, I'm going to do it. flipping the bill here, so, so you know. I'm going to attempt another insight to see if he's one of us. Go ahead. Or, yeah. Because, you know, I'm all bright and stuff. <laughs> You're pretty certain he's not one of you. Actually, if I may interject, maybe it, he sparkles. Yeah, there's no sparkle, there's <laughs> there's no indication okay. that you can see that he is one of you. Okay. But yeah, I'll need a few minutes to go get dressed ready. Um do you, do you know have... I could pick up some glitter? Do you have like a little mini shop here I could get some glitter? Oh Lord, please sir. No. We don't do glitter. Oh, okay. I was it was for my daughter. Sure. Ah, uh, here's Gloria with the pair of clippers, if that's your insistence upon. Okay. Um, yeah. And the car will be ready for you as soon as you come back down. Okay. Um, I'll do a quick glance to see if there's anything I can use as a hair dye. Maybe, like, some food coloring or something along those lines. <laughs> if you want to give me an investigation, go right ahead. Isn't your hair currently, like, black and red? Yes. Uh... Okay. You find a bottle of peroxide in your room. 
in the medicine cabinet. Okay. I'll go up there and kind of, yeah. So, you know, you peroxide will kind of be almost like a bleaching agent? Yep. Okay. Mind you, it's still black and red. It's just a lighter version of the colors. Right. And I'm going to kind of like arrange it where I really put the bleaching in on the dark side of it to kind of give the look of my new picture down there with the white tips. Your new picture, I'm assuming, and Discord. Uh, and yeah. Roll20, he's got it as well. But, yeah. Oh, is it really an Roll20? I don't see one. Okay. Oh, you yeah, you might have the bottom closed out. I have the tokens at the bottom with the pictures. Uh, yeah. Yeah, his... You look at the character bio information, that's his new look. Was Early look 2000s, Frosted Tips. Yeah. Yeah, I fear. <laughs> Okay, so the one you have in your character sheet is not the one you're referring to. Uh, the, not the token, but the character sheet itself. Is it? Do you have the, shaded glasses? The ble- uh, blue. Okay. So that is your new look. Yes. Okay. And do they send up a burger or? Nope. No burger sent to your room. No. I'm going to look around the room to see if there's like microphones or recording. Okay, give me an investigation check. All right. Uh, you ransack the room you're pretty certain there is no recording devices listening devices cameras or anything okay i'll go back down and wait for the car as you walk back down the door down the steps you look out and there is a black sedan parked right at the curb and there's a rather tall um gentleman short cut hair dark suit and you know a little driver's hat on holding the door open for you well, hi there. What's your name? Good evening, sir. My name is not important. You wish to go to 51, right? Uh, yeah. Right, we'll opt in and I'll get you there in a jiff. In Peterborough? Okay. I will hop in. It's kind of cool. Get in the back seat, look around the car. The windows are extremely tinted. And there's a divider between you and the driver. So, uh, you were driving for the building here, or? No, sir. I do not drive for this building. Oh. Okay. Kind of, kind of roll down the window a little bit, look out, make sure he's taking me the right way. Um, well... Why don't you give me a roll? Let's see. Do you know the way from where you're at to 51? Streetwise? Yep. Uh, we'll go with the streetwise. Streetwise intelligence. He seems to be going the right direction. Okay. All right. Well... Carry on, James. So just sit back here. After about half an hour or so, he pulls up to the front door, steps out, looks around, walks back to your door on the curbside, opens it and says, We are here, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. And he turns and looks at the bouncer. Does something with his hand. Closes the door behind you. Uh, I'll have to get you next time. I don't have my wallet on me. Yes, I, I already know. And uh, that is not the issue. Enjoy your evening. And if uh, you uh, have need of me, just ask. 
uh, the right people will give you the number. He gets back in the car and pulls away. Okay. Hey, um, don't I know you? What was that? You came in a little broken. The bouncer. He looks at you and goes, don't I know you? Uh, I'm the new DJ. Just came into town. Give me a subterfuge roll. Uh, subterfuge and... Uh, subterfuge and manipulation. Oh, he's gonna totally lose to that. Ooh, bestial failure? How the hell am I gonna be a bestial failure for three successes? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, as you're answering him, and he believes you completely, you're not even looking at him, you're spending too much time looking at what's in line, and at one point in time, you literally lick your lips. As the beast kind of roar, rears up inside you a little bit. Yeah. A couple of those look like tasty hamburgers to you. Okay. Did any of the ladies see me get out of the car? Or no, can't well, I'm sure everybody yeah. saw you get out of the car. The one that kind of got my lips... Uh, Salivating? Water. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to look at Jordan and say, Oh, she's with me. Um, okay. What do you say, sir? You sure yeah. I don't know you? I'll wait for I don't what? know. Okay. Well, don't I'm you... Angel. What's your name? Why don't you give me a charisma on uh, trying to get her to leave her friends and come inside with you? Just straight charisma roll? Uh, persuasion. Or... Persuasion. Persuasion, charisma, my extra guy, because I'm beautiful. There. Okay. Without missing a beat, she walks away from her friends towards you and locks her arm in yours. And you hear both her friends at the exact same time go, What the fuck, Becky? Jeez! It's okay, Becky. I'll make sure they get in. We'll get you girls in here. Shortly. Give me about 10 minutes and let him in. By the way, I'm Angel, and you are who? My name's Jordan. I Jordan. I work nice the to meet night you. shift now that we, you know. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. We, I work the night shift. Okay. Well, I'm. Just new don't DJ. cause any Just... trouble inside, and I won't have to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. Okay, still. Lover, fighter, it doesn't matter. If you don't cause no trouble inside, I won't have to beat the shit out of you. All right. Welcome Come to on, 51 Becky. Degrees. Thank you. Come on in, Becky. Okay. I'm walking. And you have Becky on your arms. Becky's yeah. about 5'7", long blonde hair. She's wearing the typical party club uh, slick black dress. Nice. Let me write down here. Becky. <laughs> Marcus's Potential meal for the Potential herd. Mm-hmm. All right. What did I say she was? 5'7". And blonde. Yep. All right. So you make your way in the club. Uh, Judd, you notice him coming in as you just okay. came in like not five minutes before he did. Okay. And do I recognize him? Uh, give me an insight. Hard B. An insight. We'll say insight wits. Huh? Insight. Sorry, I, could you go to somebody else first and I need to go deal with a dog? Not a problem. So, uh, Dominique, you make your way in the back door. Yep. 
I'll uh, go in and uh, make my way up and just tell the two guys at the door uh, got some business that uh, with the boss. All right, yeah, no problem. We understand. Boss told us that you and your friends are welcome in any time. Apparently, uh, you got a promotion, he says. Thank you. Thank you. You two take care. And then one opens the door for you as you walk in. Uh, Dominico. How are you doing? doing tonight? I'm fine. How were you after last night's escapades? Oh, I'm doing fine. I, uh, you know, that little blow seems to feel just fine, you know? Oh, that little love Nothing tap. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong. If it didn't heal, I'd be concerned. Yeah, uh, no, we came and we were curious if, uh, Strix may be still around. We had, uh, you know, I was oh, down yeah. and I met with Judd. And... She decided to stay in town for a little while. Yeah, and I was talking with Judd. He's, uh, gonna be making his way in here shortly. There's another guy out back. He distracted him and long enough for me to get in, and I didn't yeah, so know the if, uh... Yeah, it's a pesky thing. Yeah, is, uh, would it be a problem for me to just come in the front, or? Let's see. Uh, would I just kind of be passed by? It shouldn't by? be. I've had, uh, had it passed around that you and, uh, well, I guess I will decide what Devin's new cover seems to be, since he keeps giving away his covers. Yeah, Judd said it was, uh, Master Beats now, is what I heard. Master Beats, is it? Yeah, that's what I heard his new name was. His uh, new, I guess, DJ name. That's what I was told. Uh, I was I'll scrolling have, I'll over... I'll have to remember that when he arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was scrolling through the pamphlet I got, and I'm still putting it all to mind. Don't want to slip up on anything that uh, Strix gave me. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, the whole thing pertaining to... Uh, Miss Owens. Yeah. And getting her out of there. It's a little different than, you know, breaking somebody out of somewhere else. Well, you are yeah. also not the same kind of person you were prior. We, I don't know if we're wanting to make a whole scene out of the whole ordeal well, or... you do have options that uh, you can use that will not cause a scene, but I understand. No, I'm yeah. not giving you leeway to go into an FBI facility and destroy and kill everyone there. That, that would that, be ridiculous. That. And also shine too much of a spotlight on us. Yeah, from what I've learned from uh, Judd, he's mentioned the whole, you know, masquerade and everything. And domestic terrorism doesn't really seem like no. that falls under that. No, it wouldn't. But like yeah. I said, there are other ways. Yeah, we were thinking maybe uh, if she had... She seemed real savvy with technology if she had maybe the blueprints or could get the blueprints for the facility where she's at. Well, yes. I mean, that would that be could... just a matter of a few keystrokes for Strix. Yes. Uh, when I found her... Oh, well... Or maybe transfer friend, dates. When my friend found her, she was a rather... What is the word they use these days? An accomplished hacker. Before she was embraced. And since she hasn't been embraced, you know that speed in which you work the keys tends to be a little quicker when you have, uh, you know, kindred blood in you. I could only understand that, yeah. It seems like some things have gotten a little uh, easier. And yes, and they'll continue to get even easier as you progress, as long as you stay... Out of the sun. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, oh, is that... Oh, it looks like they're coming in now. Or at least one of... He's got someone with him, looking over his shoulder through the front door at... He spins Astro around Beats. looks out the glass. I think that's him, isn't it? Uh... Yes, I'd say... He roughly did a bit of a change on his uh, his appearance. Gray and pink suits him well. <sighs> so 
so gray and pink master dj master beats hmm. i'll tell you what let's see if he still has it shall we works for me he picks up the phone and makes a phone call puts it back down and uh, from those who are still outside you see somebody run up on stage to uh, a rather human looking DJ mm -hmm. whisper something to him and then the music stops and the guy's like ladies and gentlemen we have a pleasure for you this evening one of the newest DJs for tonight at uh, 51 degrees has just walked in the door and it looks like he's got a little arm candy with him Point all the, all the lights and cameras point straight to uh, Marcus's character. Yes. So why don't you come up on stage and show us what you have there, DJ Master Beats? Uh and uh, the whole crowd, the whole DJ place, Spike. Uh, <laughs> just got word from elsewhere that your name was DJ Master Beats. No. Well, whatever. Come on up here and show us what you got. I'll be right back, Becky. Hey, can you get her a drink? Walk up with this disdained look at this human DJ or whatever. Who the hell told you my name was hey, Mr. B? Hey man, look, they came up to me a minute ago and told me you was going to be playing tonight. That you just come in the door and that that was your name. I'm sorry, dude. I'm just going by what I was told. Okay, it's DJ Spike. DJ Spike. Yes. Sounds better than Master Beats. I was going to ask about the whole Master <laughs> Beats thing, but I figured it was, you know, none of my business. You know, you do you, I do me. I'll be doing her later, huh? Oh, the, the, the hottie in the in the black dress? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, oh, uh, she's got a couple friends. I think you could talk to Jordan about, you know, getting them back in here, and I might be nice to hook you up with one of her friends. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. DJ Spike doing the wingman thing. I love it. I would yeah. talk to What's Jordan, your name man. Again? taken care of. Me? Yeah. I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> we always ask you never do. the important people the names, but always the random NPCs. It's like, oh, yeah, now this random person. <laughs> I'm just, you know. A year's worth of payback or something, maybe, you oh, know? Really? Uh, you think? Yeah. Hey, this is a red herring. Let's go over here. <laughs> I love red herring for dinner. <laughs> uh, so many to choose from. Just call me Dr. Hitman. Dr. Hitman. Yeah. Because I'm a hitting them beats. Whatever. All right. I'll take the mic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dr. Hitman. Coming off the stage. Are y'all ready to party? Place erupts and screams. I said, are you ready to party? Okay, I will repeat myself. The place erupts and screams <laughs> a little louder than the last time. All right. Give let's me a this. charisma check with, uh, let's see, what can we add to that? Performance? There you go. We'll do some performance. Thank you, uh, Robert. I think you did fine. <laughs> Jeez Louise. What? My performance is maxed out. I'm almost maxed out on charisma. Well, maybe that is your character. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you... You give a, an excellent performance. What are we listening to? Just give me an idea. Um... Hmm...
uh, you'll hear without you pop up uh, from David Goda Usher. Let's see if I can pop that in there so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. Yeah, it was just, uh, it's a real song. Yeah, most yeah, likely. Copyrighted. But I'm sure we don't have the rights to it. No, I'm going to pop it in Discord so you have kind of an idea. Okay, well, I was just saying, why don't you give us a description of what kind of sound it is? It's EDM. Electronic dance music. All, All right. right. <laughs> All right, so as you guys hear the, his music start to play, uh, Judge, you're still in the crowd, not too far yeah. from the human that he walked in with. Uh, he's up there on stage. He had to do with all that that he did. I, I'm not here to cock block him, so I'm just going to go on and go back to the kitchen because I remember there was a way back to the uh, back stairs through the kitchen. Right, and you do notice the uh, human DJ that left the stage walks straight towards the front door, and the next thing you know, he comes in with uh, two brunettes, one on each arm. Yep, yeah, more power to him. <laughs> uh, let's see, your date for the evening gets set up in a special booth not okay. too far from the stage nice right, so you make your way through the kitchen up the back stairs mm -hmm. all right well you come across the you know the door closed with the guy in a black turtleneck you're standing there with his arms crossed in front of him Oh, 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 yeah. Um, uh, says the voice out from out of nowhere. Um, I was coming to check on Dom. Did you guys Igor say something? now. Huh? Did you guys say something? Yeah, I did. Who's this? Oh, oh, I don't sorry. Recognize the um, voice. Which one of you guys is this? Oh, th this is Judd. Judd, Judd, I don't recognize your voice. What what position are you standing in? Oh, oh, got it. Okay. Um, I'm standing right beside you. Yeah, all jokes aside, funny, 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 ha ha. What door are you at? You at the front door? Are you downstairs? Downstairs to the. Yeah, I'm downstairs. I'm downstairs. Okay, what do you need, man? Is uh, everything nothing, all right? Do nothing we have right an issue? now. No, no, no. Just two brunettes that got in. Okay. <laughs> then I'm uh, just gonna stop. All right. I'm <laughs> confused, but uh, sure. Judd. Anybody else here, Judd, on this line? Because this is weird. <laughs> What? No? Just me? <sighs> Been working too long. So I'll come back. I'll go back downstairs and become visible again and then come back upstairs. Stop. Can I help you? Uh, appointment with Crystal. Does he know you're coming? And Dom. Well, I'm pretty sure Dom's told him I'm here. And what is your name? Doesn't matter. Be I gotta let them know who's here. Okay, it's you. Jude. Jude. <laughs> hey, you got a fellow in the back door named Jude? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Are you on comms? Nope, sorry. You sure? Because you sound awfully familiar. No, no. No tech. All right. Well, they said they're... Don't have even a cell phone. So he pulls, opens up the door, and he's kind of, you know, rubbing his brow, shaking his head as he lets you in. Mm. You know, they say Savannah's haunted. <laughs> I walk through the door. 
<laughs> All right, I'll let him in. Are you sure you didn't hear nothing on the comms a minute ago? <laughs> is, there, is anybody else hearing wor voices out of nowhere while they're working here? No? Just me. I need a vacation. All right, let you, you, you in, let into the office area. Okay. Uh, Judd today? Oh, just depends on my mood. Uh, yes, well, welcome. Now that we're all here, I guess, you know. So, um, Master Beats, huh? Hey, it just fit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it's enough. We embarrassed your friend in front of the entire place, so I guess it works. That wasn't his yes. name? <laughs> um, for, well, I mean, you just heard him say that his name was not. Well, whatever. <laughs> Looks like he's not dropping be... too badly. Yeah. I it'll His name will probably change again in a couple days. I it think it'll expensive. probably be in about three hours. It gets expensive after a while to keep changing identities like that. And I'd have to, yeah. you know, find him a new place to live. and It's a headache. Hopefully he keeps this one. Maybe you two can be sure of that. Make sure he doesn't give out any information to the wrong people. I mean, we could cut out his tongue. <laughs> I don't know how well that'd work. Well, probably not that well. I mean, you, it, it heals. But... Uh, well. Anyway, um, I guess when he gets done with his set, I'll give him this. He pats an envelope on the table. Are the two of you still fine with your current setup of living arrangements? Oh, yeah, yeah no I, uh, I've moved uh, my main residence. I'm just a little ways, a, you know, just across the river now. I have some stuff still down, but main living arrangements have been moved. But, you know, everything goes to the P.O. box anyway, so. Well, um, he slides an envelope across to you. This is for you. What do we got? <laughs> yes, uh, this is for you. That's your new identity you chose. So if anybody r runs any reference on you, uh, it's got no links whatsoever to Dominico. Perfect, perfect. Suiting. Gotcha. And um, there's an account number there for you. To make any changes you may need to adjust your lifestyle for your new personality. That'll because work. Lord, because, you know, you can't just change your name. You have to change a few other things. Take on the role of your new role, as it were. And, uh, Jud, Jud, Jude. Whatever it is. To yeah, be. whichever. You and I have I, I mean, a little deeper discussion. A Vic oh. Vincent tells me that uh, you have contacts all over town that uh, you were able to get in touch with last night. Yes. Some of them of the more religious variety. Oh, yeah. Well. Sounds to me like you're quite resourceful for a kindred. And we could definitely use that resourcefulness here. How would you feel to working for me? Other than just oh, a babysitting I'm... job. Just a full-time gig, as it were. Oh, no problem. Thank you, just rose on me. Oh, can you see me now? No yep, problem. There you are. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's going on tonight, but something is. I, I think, it's think your, I need uh, to restart my entire computer. Was it your hospice or whatever it's called? 
Yeah, I'll spend. Off you skate. Off you skate, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I don't mind. I mean, I don't do a lot for the Camarilla, so. Well, you know, does the Camarilla do anything for you? Not really. Well, then why don't you just, like I said, work for me? Yeah, no problem. You have any protections that you may need on, from me and mine. Uh, do you wish to continue staying in your current uh, arrangement? Oh, yeah. I mean, it has family meaning for me. All right. He talks to his great something or other. Uh, yes, I they, don't know if that's real they or... They tend to do that. It's uh, kind of a, like your ability to throw a car through the wall or something. It's kind of like... From what he said, the Malkavian, I think is what he pronounced it, were crazy, not the Nos. Yes, the Malkavian are crazy, and some Nos are able to see spirits, the, the, the dead, if it were, you know past relations, spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call them. Mind you, not all yeah. can, but I've heard different stories. Uh, yeah, it, it actually started before I became, you know, before I was reawakened, reborn. But, you know. Yeah. Just got worse. It is, Savannah. And there are stories of them all over. Yeah. yeah. The, the actual dead, that is, spirits and such. I mean, they have Tours for crying out loud. Mortals find things so interesting. Mm -hmm. So it would be a really bad day, say, for a Malkavian to like go to Gettysburg. Probably. Probably, yes. <laughs> they probably wouldn't leave. Maybe one there now. Yeah. But I've never bothered to go check. Um... So, uh, about this Amber Owens. Yeah, Did I mentioned... Did uh... her busted out? Well, I mean, she doesn't deserve what they're going to do to her. She has no proper affiliation with any of the uh, kindred, so why should she be treated like one? Yeah, and I was curious if, like, would they ever move her? If, like, maybe at night, if we could get, say, like a... Uh, route where they're going to move her if it's not going to be too heavily guarded that might be an easier time to get her than say inside a building that is a possibility i mean when strix gets here she can uh i suppose answer those questions for you yeah i'm oh. just amazed they can't realize she's human and just you know like let her go well that's the problem with these people they don't care they see any humans that have any kind of connection to us as an unknown variable. And in that case, unknown, as far as the SI is concerned, is bad. I see. So she'll be treated like any other... And here I am losing my, my terminology. Kindred. No, no. The, well, yeah, there's the ghouls. And then there's also those who volunteer to be our... Uh, heard heard but i think they're called kin or so or something like that i can't remember what's a ghoul necessarily oh uh, ghouls are, are humans who pretty much work for us okay gotcha they're, they're not these thin blood no, uh, no they're not you, thin you, blood. You they're feed still them human blood until yeah they, they they're well not really you feed them your blood so they're a little bit stronger faster whatever uh, and and also they, them to you. yeah, you kind of okay. bind them with the blood. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I have a few. Well, prime example: the gentleman watching the doors. Oh, so they're yours they're mine. per se. They're not just hired. No, no, the combination. I do pay them. Okay. But money only buys so much loyalty. So if they're ghoul then they're kind of just under your thumb per in a, se in a sense more than just payment correct or threats they're bound to me in a way 
Gotcha. So it's kind of like I think you mentioned, Jude, uh, blood bond per se. Yep. Very much, yeah. Cool. All kinds of things to learn. And I'm assuming that you don't just go around doing that willy nilly because, no. again, they can draw attention. But isn't that technically breaking said masquerade? No. Well, not really. I mean, they're yours. I mean, you have to protect them. If they destroy the masquerade, you're the one that's kind of going to get blamed for it. Yeah, it was, it's just kind of, you know, a fine line, it seems, with that. Because they're still human, but you're telling them about every, not no, everything, per se. They, know, but... not, they don't know everything. They're just bound to work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. It just seems like a very fine line. In, in the world of the kindred, we have several ghouls that are out there. Even the Camarilla employs them for like, daytime guards while they're resting, or even bank managers and financiers. Yeah, I would think that it'd be Depends. useful for people to be able to, you know, do stuff during the day when places are open for you right. and when you can't. And uh, and some don't even really know their, you know, what vampires really are. It just depends on how the person did it. Remember gotcha. I told you that there are some powers that kind of beat the will down and some that just kind of make people love you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, things like that. Yeah, you mentioned that I might have the ability at some point to gain something that might have something like that. Not like what Devin's able to do, but exert my presence per se. Yeah. But well, since all you've kinds of new agreed, things. Agreed. He slides an envelope across to you. Okay. Inside is a pretty much a bank card and a phone number a car you know a card with a phone number on it um, I didn't acquire you a cell phone because I didn't know if you required to use one seeing how you previously or you know Camarilla didn't want to assume well the truth is I never really learned how to use one Well, the, so I might get one of those really basic things so that, you know... Well, the number on that card is in case you are ever in any trouble. You mm -hmm. can call it, and someone will come to assist. That kind sounds of a, great. I don't want to say a get-out-of-jail-free card, but it's definitely if you're in a bit of a pickle and you can't handle it yourself. It's backup, I suppose, is the best phrase to use. Yeah. Sounds like a good sounds good to me. Thank you. Yeah, count. and I'll just open up the envelope and what all's in the envelope? Same thing kinda, or is there a little You more? have your uh, passport well, mm -hmm. passport, driver's license. Uh, there's a bank card with your new name on it with a bank you know, bank information. Yeah. Card with a phone number. Uh, you already have a cell phone, so he didn't give you one of those. Uh you said you were fine with your current living arrangements, so he didn't give you any... He didn't make arrangements for you to have a place. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Uh, uh, are there moment. any safe houses in case something does go awry? That's a good question. Yes, there are. Now, hold on a moment. Before we uh, continue this conversation, why don't we get uh, DJ Master Beats up here to join us? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. I need to go upstairs anyway. So, uh, before we do that, um, DJ Hitman comes back up on stage just as your second set uh, starts to wind down. Mm -hmm. He grabs a mic and says, let's give it up for uh, DJ Spike, everyone. DJ Spike. The crowd goes nuts. You know, some claps, some raised hands. Uh, hey, they tell me that you're presence is uh, required upstairs apparently the mm. big boss did you know the big guy 
Oh, yeah. He used to want to call me in here. I'm just, see, I'm from Texas, you know. And what, what, apparently what, the DJ I, they had here. We've never got, actually met. Nobody actually have ever really met him. So that's why it's kind of kind of cool to meet somebody that actually knows the guy that owns the place. Anyway, they said that you have an appointment upstairs with him and he just wanted to hear your yeah. music right quick before you came up to talk to him. All right, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, appreciate your wingman and those two, those two that were outside. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a little, you know, party favors that we can, you know, all of us could hook up with party and maybe have an after party after my place afterwards? What kind of party favors are we talking about, bro? I mean, I got, no. I got hookups. I don't know what you mean, but what, 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 I'll have some for you later, right? All right. After this meeting, I'll make sure the girls all come back to my place. You come. We all have a little party. Know what I'm saying? I love it, brother. Love it. All right. You have a good... Get up there and take care of that meeting, man. And I'll just go ahead and hit these beats. All right. All right. So you make your way upstairs. They open the door. They'll let you in. And we're going to go ahead and take a break. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, don't go too far. We'll be right back in about 10 minutes. Let everybody use the bathroom. Get drinks. You know, you name it. And we'll be back. Oh.